Hey, this is Tom checking in again on the barn beam bed. It's been quite a while since I've done any video on this. I got kind of carried away. I got a little bit uh, obsessed with the deadline and the push, so I didn't take a lot of video of this, but I wanted to show you where I'm at just before we get ready to do the finish. And here it is right here behind me. This is the, the headboard, and I'll give you a good view of it. So this is the headboard that, that curves backwards. You can see kind of in this direction here to rest against. But isn't that beautiful? That's the, uh, you know, the patchwork or um, pattern of the chestnut pieces. And if you see it at this low angle, I don't know if you can pick that up, but these are all textured and also domed a bit so you get this kind of um, woven appearance. You can see even the top, I had to apply this nice chestnut along the top edge. And it's got a little curvature to the top edge, so everything has like this soft, worn, warm aged feeling to it. I just love it. So now it's kind of time to get it the color right and get the pieces to blend. Now here's one of the head posts. You can see this is similar and I don't know if you can pick up the texture on the top of that post but it's it's been hit with a wire brush so you get like this um, almost like um, driftwood where the softer material wears away and there it is and I love it. It's, it's got bug holes, a few nail holes here and there. But once the finish gets on, it's all going to come together and have a beautiful, harmonious look. Now that's the headboard. And behind me, you can see the other bench I have active is the, the footboard. And this is a little lower. And... You see this one is curving the other direction. So this will be curving out where the headboard is back. So it'll be a bit like the feeling of a sleigh bed. But there, this one's a little shorter in height, but not by much. And you get that same nice appearance. Now, this is actually gonna stick a little bit above the mattress height. The mattress height is about 30 inches, will be about this height on the inside. So on the inside, I didn't want to just veneer it with straight grain right across that you'd see. It seemed like that would be funny with these jaggedy points. So check out how I handled that. I don't know if you can see that very well, but that is, that's just chestnut veneer that I picked up and I gave it the same pattern, but that's not textured and woven. It's not reclaimed in the same way so it's it's um, not as rough but I've, I've sanded it smooth so once the uh, the finish is on and when the light hits it you still get you can see that the way the lights hitting it and reflecting differently you get that checkered uh, woven pattern which looks like it continues right through the top so I thought that was a nice way to finish the inside and I'm looking forward to see the end result of that. So there it is. I'm gonna get the finish started. But one more thing I'll show you here are the, the bed rails. You can see this is, uh, this is how I do it, this heavy construction. They're inch and three quarters wide, and these are eight inches high. These are the side rails. And you can see, uh, this is one of the long rails right here. You can see it's actually got a curvature to the shoulder of this tenon, which will butt against the curve of the leg. And then here is a deep pocket so I can slide the bed bolt in and it will go and thread into a nut that's embedded in the leg over here and will pull it tight. And these channels are for the bed hangers, these little angle iron brackets that support 
the box spring and then we'll put the mattress on top of that. So we're getting close. I'm excited to get it in the finishing room and get the color going and the shellac. I'm gonna put a potassium dichromate on first which will change the color a bit. Just warm it up a bit darker. Uh, this is pretty close right here, so I don't want to do too much there. And then um, I'm going to put a couple coats of shellac, possibly a glaze, a little more shellac, and maybe one hit of uh, satin varnish or lacquer. We'll see how it stands there. All right. So I will check back and hopefully have a bed well close to finish when I come back. Here's a quick peek while I'm finishing. I've already got a couple coats of shellac thin on there. And now I'm applying a glazing stain to bring all together a bit and to add a richness and a depth to the finish. So some of the glaze will get captured in these little recesses and will highlight the height difference and create more of an impression of depth here on the headboard. And by applying a couple coats of shellac first, I am uh, preventing a lot of absorption in these higher areas, so I don't wanna get it too dark. Although it looks darker here, I'm gonna wipe most of this right off. This is kind of interesting to have to brush it on in different directions. I've never, uh, I've never had to do it this way. And when you're sanding, of course, you also have to hit it that way. So I'll do a section and before it sets up too much, I'll come along and wipe it off. Look at so you can kind of see what I'm talking about with the depth. It's already got such a beautiful aged color to it just from the antique nature of the barn beams and the variation and color. You know, here's a darker piece. It's a lighter one, darker, and then we've got the nail holes and a couple I filled, but most of these bug holes I've just left them open so they get color inside them and this this is just creating a depth and a richness and bringing out the ultimate warmth of American chestnut. Oh, I love it so much. Almost too much. <laughs> So I'm, I'm going to put my mask back on and finish up with this and then I'll, I'll actually uh, spray it with one more coat of shellac as a sealer and then it'll get one final thin coat of lacquer that'll be satin and just um, give it a nice uh, softer, less shiny uh, finish which will be very appealing and natural feeling. All right, I will check in with you again.